we're looking at the pressure volume relationship of gas. Uh, we look at this by holding amount of gas in terms of moles and we hold the temperature constant. So we're only looking at two properties so we can create a two-dimensional graph of the relationship. Uh, so Boyle studied this and uh, the law that we have from this is called Boyle's law. He found that the relationship looked like this. So if you decrease volume of gas, the pressure will increase. If you increase in volume of gas, the pressure decreases. It's an inverse relationship. The property of this graph is such that the pressure times volume would equal to a constant. And we see that they move in opposite directions to the inverse relationship. So if we were to increase our volume, our pressure would have to decrease. They have to move in opposite directions. Or if we decrease our volume, our pressure is going to increase. They move in opposite directions. So if we're keeping our moles and temperature constant, we can use this pressure times volume at one measurement to predict a future measurement. So that's the form of Boyle's law that we use. Uh, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. The numbers are not important. It could be P initial, V initial equals P final, V final. There, the numbers are just representing match sets. So this pressure has to be long to that volume. And we are going to solve it for either pressure or volume. We see that our resulting pressure is the initial pressure times the ratio of the initial over final volumes. Same with the volume. Uh, the final volume is the initial volume times the ratio of the initial pressure over the final pressure. This means that for our units, The units have to match. We don't have to use specific units for pressure as long as we're using the same units for both pressures. We don't need a specific unit for volume as long as we're using the same unit for both volumes. So in this ratio here, we see that the volume units will cancel off, what we put in for pressure, we get for pressure. Down here, the pressure units cancel off, what we put in for volume, we get for volume. So this is what we use whenever we see pressure volume change, but not moles in temperature. So let's look how it's applied to a, a problem here. So for the first problem, we have an aerosol can. They come pressurized so they can spray out their gas. So it starts off with a volume of 560 milliliters. When we spray it into a bag, it occupies 5.84 liters at 0.977 atmospheres. So we're asking how much pressure was inside that can to begin with. So we're looking for pressure So I'm writing the equation now for pressure. See that uh, pressure and volumes are matched multiple sets. So I have P2 and the B2 has to be on top to give me that match set. So to do this, we're going to have to make sure our units are matching. So we have atmospheres going through pressure. That is OK. The Atmospheres belongs to the 5.84 liters. So that'll be on top here. The bottom, we need to have matching units. So 560 mLs will be 0 0.560 liters. So we have this set up. We see the liters are canceling. We're going to get atmospheres for an answer. We run that through our calculator, we end up with a 10.2 atmospheres as a pressure inside the can. 
So let's try another one. A bag uh, is sealed at sea level when atmospheric pressure with a volume of 315 milliliters. We move to Denver, which has an air pressure of 0.775 atmospheres. What would the bag expand to? So as you go up in elevation, the pressure decreases. As the pressure decreases, you know the bag is going to expand. So we're looking for volume. So we're starting off with a volume of 315 milliliters. So that's a mass set with one atmosphere. So one atmosphere is going to go on top. And then 0.77 by atmospheres from bottom. So the units atmospheres will cancel off. We're going to get milliliters for our answer. We run that through our calculator and we end up with 406 milliliters for the volume that the bag expands to up in Denver. 